Recording. Welcome to Short Convos Podcast with my dear friend As Mirale. And mine, JC Warrior of Light like Cashman. Welcome to episode 50. Whoa, fanfare. We should have had those big popper things and everything. Uh, as unlike most of our podcasts, which are uh, maybe someone's joining us for the first time on episode 50, uh, which are a conversation that we basically have weekly that we now record and uh, share through it. Well, saying that, we had a really lovely uh, feedback today, didn't we? We had a lovely message off of uh, Bridget. Bridget, thank you for your uh, lovely feedback. It, uh, she reached out to say that one uh, particular episode really, uh, yeah, uh, we're, she found really good. So resonated, that's the word I was looking for. So thank you for that, uh, Bridget. It's uh, what we do it all for. Uh, but yes, we, we never usually script, do we? Uh, we don't at all. We just have our convo. Uh, but I messaged you earlier and I said, uh, what about we have a 50th spend? 50th special so uh we've gonna title this one 50 things before you die that's what we're gonna do right as that's what we're gonna do so i was thinking as i was writing up my list do we have to put a one minute limit on each one to avoid this being a five hour episode yeah i i've i've we the great minds think alike we are okay. in balance and we are connected <laughs> well the reason the reason I chose this, I wanted to say a reason why it came to mind. A little while ago, uh, my mother-in-law, uh, she saw in the papers a, I think it was 15, I don't think it was a list of 50, 15 things kids should have done before they're 18 or something like that. I looked at the list and uh, I was particularly pleased because nearly every single one our kids had done, you know, from build a fire to go sledging to uh, all, all the different things. So that, that's what brought me on to this. I thought, you know, 50 is quite a good task as well, could have a conversation. So what I've done as uh, I've, I, I've written down uh, a topic for each 10 uh, to sort of help steer us on the way. Okay. if that helps in any way yeah that's, that's so i might go i might go by that but we can steer off you know go way off piste as well uh, at any time uh, during, okay. during this uh, and we can draw on past present can you hear dogs in the background no yeah, that, that's a nice sound <laughs> yeah i'm gonna go shut the door uh, we can draw on past present or future so we can draw on things that you know we've done or have done what we're doing now or we've got now what we want to do or do in the future so can i can i kick it off i'm quite excited please, please do please do so um, our first ten, i reckon we should do food some because we always talk about food so go along the food route so my number one uh things you should do before you die is eat because if you don't eat, you're going to die. Oh no! <laughs> this is not starting off on the right foot. <laughs> I think we've set the bar very low here. <laughs> As number two, number two, I'm gonna I'm gonna amp it up. I'm gonna say you should eat a really really good steak if you are not of the vegan persuasion. You should eat a good steak. I mean, aged, matured cooked properly to a medium rare and served as it should be with or without sauce as you like as you like but have a good steak cooked properly and enjoy it and don't worry about the price too much number three eat at a michelin star restaurant uh, I've been fortunate to eat uh, twice at the same restaurant, actually, uh, the Fat Duck, uh, Heston Blumentime, and it was a fantastic experience. So I'm sure you could pay a lot of money not have a good experience, but uh, that, that's what I, I would throw in. Eat at Michelin Star. It's worth, in my opinion, uh, if you're into food, the, yeah, the, the time and effort. Yeah, I'd echo that recommendation in particular of the fat duck. I think that's a great place to eat. So if you can, you can stretch it and you can invest it. Yeah, I'd agree with you on that one. Uh, I'll go with the same first world uh, recommendation and say <laughs> drink a good aged wine. Uh, drink a vintage wine because it's very different to, you know, your, your regular plonk that you might enjoy on a weekend. So at some point, go and uh, drink a good aged wine and again you're going to spend a bit of money to do so but i think it's a worthwhile experience at least once in your life uh my number five is cook on a real fire 
So I mean, yeah. like build the fire, out camping, in your garden. It might just be sausages uh, or a few hours baked beans or something like that. Uh, cook, cook on a real fire. I think everything tastes better on a real fire. My number, well, number six, uh, cook for your whole family. And by that, I mean, cook for as many people as you possibly can. And whether that be a barbecue, a roast dinner, Christmas dinner, there's something very special about cooking a big meal and serving it to all the people you love at the same time and then sitting around and just basking in that for a moment. So yeah, cook for your whole family, cook for a big group. As we go through this list, I, will, I better say just in case as uh, you know, you want to throw it in at a suitable time, i.e. you've got some that, uh, you know, don't fit. I, I was thinking the second 10 travel orientated, mm -hmm. uh, 20 media and culture, whatever that means to you, 30 uh, uh, sport and leisure, uh, 40, uh, what ultimately our, our podcast is about, uh, self-development. Okay. I think I can and I'd, fit within that. We, we just did number six, didn't we? I'd also yes. say on the back of your one, uh, everyone doesn't have to do all of these things before they die. You know, we're not, no. there's not a, a police come. So I ain't cooking for no one of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do a big family meal when I've got Lauren and three girls. And <laughs> not saying it's not a man's thing or everything. I, I, I do cook well when I cook. We had a nice uh, family uh come dine with me but i don't i've got no interest in doing that as camping <laughs> cook while camping right, I, yeah cook while camping uh i would say this one's harder to sort of plan and do but eat authentic with a family away uh, for, from uh, a restaurant. So that by that, uh, I mean, we ate with an Italian family uh, in their house and we had like an eight course meal at the mama's table and everything else. And it was so authentic. So if you can eat away authentic, then do. Good one. Uh, I'm gonna stay with the cooking vibe because I, I enjoy cooking. Cook something that you would never ever bother to cook because it's more convenient to just go buy it. So a good example is like make fresh pasta for yourself because you could go buy very good pasta, but there's nothing that compares to making fresh pasta at home. Same goes for bread. Uh, you can buy real good bread, but I recommend everyone at some point make your own loaf of bread at home. Sourdough if you can really be bothered. Yeah, good shout. Right. Uh... Last one for the food, uh, the 10. Uh, well, this is number nine. Uh, I put travel as number 10. Uh, have at some point a puddings only meal. So either have See, the this puddings is what I first, want <laughs> or have puddings only for a meal. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's just so exciting. It's so good. We have one more for food. Uh, I, I'm happy to start travel unless you want one more for food. I'm going to squeeze one more in. You can count it as like 10.5 if necessary. No, we'll call it as 10. We'll call it as 10. Call it 10. No, I'm happy for that. Go a day without it. Ooh. Go a whole day without eating. Do uh, experience fasting and experience hunger for at least a 24-hour period, at least once. And not just because you're ill, or does that count? Not because you're ill. In, in fact, I want you to be in perfectly good health and I want you to go about your day as normal, but just without food. Uh, we're actually in the midst of Ramadan at the moment. So uh, all any of our Muslim listeners that are just sitting there going, yeah, yeah. do it 30 <laughs> days every single year. No yeah. biggie. Uh, but I think everyone should experience hunger, real hunger at some point. And I think that's a good way of doing it. Yeah, great shout. Uh, right, so we'll go into a travel topic. I'm going to start by places I think we, I, I would like to go back to, uh, or places I'd like to go. So the Sequoia National Forest in uh, California, the Great uh, Redwoods, uh, one of the most magical places you can go. Not in a sense of characters walking around dressed up with big ears, as in real life, big 
no impressive trees. So Sequoia National Forest. Yeah, that's a great one. Uh, I'll go the other side of that one and I'll say go to New York. Go to the Big Apple and experience that city in particular because it's a bit of a bit of a clown show to say the least. It's a madhouse, but I think as a visit, I wouldn't want to live there, but I enjoyed visiting it. I think it's quite a sight to behold. Okay, right. It's going to get more more tricky now. Uh -oh, I've uh, <laughs> just messed up the list. He's messed up his yeah, order. Uh, yeah. Uh oh. Uh, we interrupt we just, this broadcast. <laughs> yes. We just did uh, eleven, didn't we? No, you yeah. did twelve. I did twelve. You just said New New York, Grand Canyon. Go to the Grand Canyon. Uh, there. It's uh, in whatever way you can do it. We didn't do the helicopter or the plane or anything. We went on a bus and then walked to it. It's one of those things when you look at, you can't believe your eyes, what you're looking at. It's like you think they just put a big sheet up or, or something. It is really, I don't know where to describe it or inspiring or, or what. It's one of those things that is just properly, yeah, awesome. Takes your breath away, spiritual and everything. So go, go see the Grand Canyon. We're vibing today. We're, we're bouncing off each other. I'm in a very similar mindset. Mine is go see a waterfall, like a proper oh. waterfall. Uh, anywhere, anyone, I'm not going to give you a specific one to go, go find, but there's something about those things that, like you said, very similar to the Grand Canyon experience is it's like your jaw kind of hits the floor and you just stare at it and it puts you in touch with nature in a way that not many things do. Waterfall. I was going to uh, actually say the Grand Canyon, but uh, the Niagara Falls, because you just covered that in uh, in Canada. Uh, my next one, which I haven't done yet, is go to Japan. Uh, I think while we're there, it'd be good to see China as well, or do that as a separate trip. Uh, but I've just got, I want to go to Japan. I just want to see the culture. I just want to see the place. Uh, I've got a lot of respect for the for the country and uh, the history and everything. So that, that's on my, my bucket list to, to do, Japan or China. Yeah, Japan's actually on our go-to list next year. That's, uh, no, I... <laughs> that's, that's happening for us. I, I, I want to get that done before we make babies. And then life goes crazy again. Uh, what number are we on? Yeah. Uh, this would be 16, I make it, if anyone's keeping track at home. 60. I'm going to break away from specific places and I'm going to say go to another continent. Uh, and this is kind of wrapping in with what we said of whether you go, if you're in Europe, go to America or go to Asia because the culture is just so different. And it's not a case of right or wrong or better or worse, but it's different. And I think it's an important thing to experience. I think the best way to do that is to get to uh, a different continent or Africa. I missed Africa. Yeah. Uh, road trip. If you've never done a road trip, do a road trip and make it whatever you want to make it, whether it's uh, with a family, on your own, with a partner, with, uh, you know, uh, friends, uh, whether it's far, close, whatever. But ju just plan a, a trip to drive uh, somewhere. And uh, the further, the, the better. Uh, and uh, get some music, get some sweets, get, just do, do a road trip. Yes. Uh, with like, we're fitting in with a road trip, travel to somewhere in your own country. Um, because I think a lot of us, when we think of holidays and breaks, we always think of going abroad. But you'd be surprised how many beautiful spots there are like you take England, for example, I think England has some really beautiful places that, that people can visit and haven't done. So like national parks, some of our beach fronts and all the rest of it are stunning. So yeah, do a, do a stay at home holiday. Number 18 as, or was that the one? Is that, that, that was, stay that was 18. Home. I stay at home one. Uh, do you have anything else for travel or should we move on to media and culture after this one? I've got one more for travel. You go, you go. Okay, drive fast. It's harder to uh, do at the moment with the roads being busy and everything else. So I don't mean for anyone to go out there and be dangerous or whatever, but put on some good tunes, find an open road and, or use a bike or whatever your means of going fast is and drive fast. Uh, you know, I'm not going to condone it around country lanes, that kind of thing, but it's 
It'll be so good driving fast. <laughs> go to Germany, get on the autobahn and drive fast. There you fast. go. There you yeah. go. <laughs> drive, drive fast. Do some traveling fast because it's a, it's a good, a good buzz. Uh, media and culture as media and culture. This will take us into twenty. Well, yeah. what, what this do you covers a lot. Of, this covers a lot of ground, doesn't it? So we're talking yeah. media as in film, TV, books, culture, albums. Yeah, whatever you want. Okay, I'm going to start with an album that you should listen to. If you haven't listened to Rumours by Fleetwood Mac, you need to go listen to that. Start to finish, and you have to listen to the album. Do not skip anything. Do not fast forward. Listen to it with headphones if you can, or a good pair of speakers, uh, and do the whole album. Rumours, Fleetwood Mac. Oh, great, great one. Uh, well, my next one, I, I can't do this without saying this. Watch Star Wars. Uh, if you've already watched it, watch it again. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, w watch Star Wars. Uh, number 22, that was. Sticking with the unintentional Disney theme, uh, watch the whole Marvel Universe. And if you can, do it in order. Uh, I believe, JC, you've done this? Not yet. Or We're not still this... working through this. We're still working The list is available this. online of the chronological order of these films now, ending in the, uh, the end game one. So go through from, I believe it's Iron Man that starts it off, uh, and go through all of the Marvel films. I think they're a great collection of movies. I'm doing the, uh, we did start that, but we're now on the Star Wars, what we're doing in chronological order. That, that's what, as in, yeah, the, the storyline. Uh, play your favourite album, unless it's a, uh, just a musical, uh, as in, uh, or, uh, without lyrics. Read the lyrics with it. Uh, it works for me well with Springsteen, I mentioned before, because it gives you a different understanding to the, the songs and you think, oh, well, actually, I've always been singing it that way, but they're not the words mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of thing. So, yeah, li listen to your favourite album, not just a song, a whole album with, with, lyric with reading the lyrics. Read. Uh, mm, actually, I'm going to save this one for the personal development my man, Demel man, one later. Uh, I'll do another one. Read 48 Laws of Power. Oh, uh, it's, a, yeah. it's a very powerful, actually even better, listen to the audio book of 48 Laws of Power because the audio book is narrated by a guy that sounds like a super villain from a comic book film. Uh, and he does it, he does it real justice. So yeah, 48 Laws of Power, listen to the audio book. Good one. I'm glad you said that because I've started it, but I never finished it. So yeah, go back uh, to it. <laughs> I must, yeah, must go back to it. Uh, listen to all of our podcasts. I suppose I've got to put that in there, and I. So yeah, I think that's a halfway all... plug as well. <laughs> yeah. So if you haven't, if you haven't uh, yet listened to all of our podcasts, go back to the beginning. Tell us all, all about uh, what we said because I was thinking, oh, we could do a like regression back through them all, but I can't even remember what we said in any of them. I can't remember what we said like last week, let alone yeah. forty nine episodes ago. So yeah, for sure, we'll have to go back at some point. You got twenty seven as twenty seven. I'm going to say watch. Well, I, I, I found it really hard to pick an anime, but if you've never enjoyed anime, this is a good place to start. Watch Cowboy Bebop, uh, which is a fantastic anime. Uh, and generally, I'd say enjoy some anime culture because it's a media form all of its own that I think de deserves recognition. Can I tag in 27 there, uh, Spirited Away? Yes, uh, I love that. That was I was shifting between the two, so Spirit Away is definitely yeah, amazing recommendation. I love that. Uh, I just had one for media and culture. I thought I'd leave it for later, but I can't. oh, uh, learn an instrument. I don't know if you'd uh, agree with that as, uh, but learn a, a, an instrument. I I can't uh, do an instrument really at all, uh, but I've tried learning a keyboard and a, a harmonica. Uh, and I, I just enjoyed the experience. I suppose I haven't because I just haven't put the time into it. But uh, yeah, learn a, oh, that's something to do as well. When we get yeah. Like and even if you just learn four chords, that's enough to play 
about 60 to 70% of the music you probably enjoy. So you don't need to get mega proficient, but as someone who's studied music, I'll tell you, if you can learn four chords, you can go a long way with any instrument you want uh, just by having that knowledge. Uh, go watch a band live. Go watch oh, a great. live yeah. performance because it's oh. not the same. Uh, live music needs to be experienced. I know it's a bit tricky at the moment with the, the world, but live performance, ideally your favorite band or act, uh, yeah, has to be done. All right, that takes us into 30 hours. I'm going to okay. sport and leisure, sport and leisure. I'm going to cross the vibe of culture and leisure in here and uh, I'll say paint paint something so my dad mm -hmm. was an artist uh, I'm by no means an artist but it's something I plan to when I get older uh, to explore a bit more I watched him paint so much I'm pretty sure somewhere in here is some it's talent <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, and I, I just want to be a bit older a bit grayer a bit everything else before it comes out maybe in uh, you know it, somewhere or some somehow uh, so so paint, uh, and if not, you know, on a piece of canvas, paint a room or paint something. Uh, there's something I enjoy, must be the nostalgia about painting. I'll, I'll chain onto that one. I won't call this the next one, but uh, go look at Jim Carrey's artwork, the comedian okay. actor, Jim Carrey. Uh, he does them, you would love it, mad psychedelic artwork. Uh, and I think it, it really shows another side to him than what you know. And I think that's the thing about painting is it allows you to express something within you that you probably haven't had the chance to express elsewhere, whether it be through sport or something else. So I will and he hasn't. just chain that on. He hasn't? <laughs> He hasn't oh, expressed it. <laughs> well, it, As in it's, it, it, whatever it is, it's pretty <laughs> mad and pretty new. So I like it. <laughs> it's uh, it's worth a look. Um, cool, cool. Remind me what number 30 is, sports. Sport, a sport and leisure, but we can cross over the whole culture thing again, can't we? Whatever yeah, yeah. you want to hit with. So I will say compete at something. Ah. You got my next one. But that's, oh, that's still you. <laughs> you can you can bounce on it, but yeah, compete at something. Uh, who cares what level? If you can take it to a high level, then please do. But go and experience competition and all the highs and lows that that come along with it. And you can uh, build on that one. Yeah, build on that one. Do martial arts. Uh, so if you Ding. did do it or have never done it, then do martial arts for all the things it gives you as well as the competing self-defense and everything else so yeah do martial arts 33 hours do yoga shout out oh, to uh, mrs out. cashman uh do yoga i think regardless of if you are a weightlifter a martial artist a footballer it's probably one of the most beneficial things you can do for your body your mind your spirit do some do some yoga find someone who resonates to you when they teach it and um do some stretching. Uh, this is similar to the music one, but I think it is different. Uh, watch live sport, uh, but at its highest level if possible, because yes. you can then really appreciate it. Uh, it's one thing I like about NFL the most when we do the games, they do the games, we get to the games here, is the whole experience, uh, let alone watching, you know, what, what they're doing as well. So yeah, work, watch live sport. It's very different that, isn't it? Because like your TV for most people, if you're not, if you don't know about cameras, most TVs are just showing you stuff at 30 frames or possibly 60 frames a second. So you're not actually fathoming the speed at which certain things are happening and the athleticism, like even just our kickboxing world, it doesn't translate when you watch it back on a film to when you were watching that fight in person, say an Irish Open final that speed and power doesn't translate. So it has to be watched live to really experience it. Uh, my next one is be part of a team. Five-a-side football, martial art team, be part of a team, train together, support each other, suffer together, lose together, win together, be part of a team. Oh, that's a great one, As uh, Shoot a gun, wield yes. an axe. Use a weapon. 
uh, yes. uh, in some now kind of talking. sport, <laughs> so some kind of sport context or leisure activity. I don't mean you know go and like get on the news for being a massacre or something like that. But yeah, you use a weapon, you fire a fully loaded gun or uh, which you can't really do in this country, but a gun or a, a shotgun, bow and arrow, or yeah, yeah. So so something yeah. You get me. You get. Oh, me. I get you. <laughs> um, oh, really? We're going a little bit off here, but I'm I'm vibing off your gun thing. Smash something. <laughs> Destroy something. A room. A piece of furniture. A plate. I don't care. Smash something up. Tell me what was one of the most. I, I I've always loved this. When it, when I was a kid. Uh, I used to go to the uh, breakers yard with my dad because he used to get, you can't do it now, but he used to get all the bits of the cars. He used to mod cars quite a bit. And that was one of my favourite things. Go in his toolbox, usually the hammer, run around. <laughs> and, they, you know, probably just a little shit looking back, but just smashed up. It was so much fun. But what, what's been your most satisfying smash? I've got to ask, guys, because this is such a oh. good one. Greenhouse. We had a greenhouse oh. at my mum's house. Oh, it was... It was beautiful. When I look back on it, I think real irresponsible parenting, but <laughs> I, I, uh, I threw rocks at it. I smashed it with a stick. I, like, I just beat this thing to death until it fell down and collapsed in front of me. And then you just, I just felt like four. I felt like the most powerful thing on the planet. It was, it was great. It was good. It's uh, mine, up. if I may say, is when uh, it might come out slightly or context might not come across right. Was oh, I know. My bro one. Brother and I sorted my nan and granddad's house. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, like, it dilapidated indoors. The house, you know, bungalow was absolutely fine, but they got old. They'd gone into care. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they a little bit. And intention of saving the wardrobe or the yeah and the best way of getting it all out was just destroy it with a sledgehammer we just turned up and it, because of the you know be for a lot of grief and trouble at the time it, yeah that, that was one of my favorite looking back smashing smashing times oh that was a great one as I, I might put that up there as one of my favorite ones of this list that i've done in the past so i'm gonna go do in a minute and i'm yes. gonna do in the future <laughs> exactly smash it. Smash uh, it. Climb a tree. Climb yeah, a tree. good. If you've never climbed a tree as a child, if you have and you've never climbed it as an adult, climb a tree. I'm never going to stop climbing a tree. I love climbing trees. Yeah, I can echo that one. Do we have more? Or are we? Are we? Thirty nine. We're on thirty nine. Have you got one more sport, leisure, culture, or something? Yeah. Do play a game or do something that you suck at. <laughs> do something that makes you really uncomfortable and just be okay with it. Like just suck at it and have a good time anyway. And don't get too up in your feelings or uh, wrapped up in your ego over it. Just do something and be rubbish. Cause I think that's a, a humbling thing to experience even better. Try and do it with like kids that are really good at it. <laughs> but, you know, my favorite story of this, and this is a martial arts story was Kevin when Carla broke his nose uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and he went to work and what did he say a 15 year old girl <laughs> did it to me and I just thought yeah good for you Kevin because there's just no ego involved this guy is like in his 50s or something got beaten up by a teenage girl and he's just completely cool with it and I was like yeah Kevin you're you're miles ahead of a lot of people uh, in that respect if you ever listen yeah. to this I got a lot of respect for him for that. I think that's a great one to go into the self-development side of things as well. Yeah. So <laughs> there we go. 40 is self-development. And uh, I would say the we've got a call on a book here. I think one of the best, if not the best self-development books I've ever read is uh, The Chink Paradox. Uh, the uh, What's its other name? Oh, I can't even, even know it's the best book I've read. Uh, mind Chim paradox, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah. Chim paradox. Uh, it's it's just such a great read. I think the way it's put together, the way that you can read it, and the not yeah, I think it's one of the best self uh, help books you can get. Uh, I'll give another book. This was I was just talking about this the other day with someone. This was the first personal development book I read, 
and it I remember it blowing my mind and it opened me up to this whole thing of improving oneself uh, and it was how to win friends and influence people now the title is intentionally a little bit weird but the real thing about this book is it really makes you understand how to how to get the best out of people and how to get the best out of yourself and I found it to be one of the most powerful books I ever read in terms of how I interact with the world on a daily basis. Yeah, very good. As I wanted to call 24, and I did do 24, and I wanted to call 42 uh, for the obvious uh, reasons. Uh, 42, oh, make love. And I don't just mean it in the sense of the physical, but yes, make love, make a relationship to make love, make make all of those wonderful things uh, with a partner. I know some people stay refrain from it or anything else. I think you are missing out on life, in my opinion, if you don't have a partner, if you do not experience those closeness, those bonds, those, those things where, with another person. That's a beautiful one. And if I could I'm bounce really off of that, could I bounce, bounce off bounce, of that? Please. I bounce, have children. Yeah. For as much pain, expense and everything else they will give you for the remainder of your life, have children. And, uh, you know, by whatever means, I understand that some people will not be able to. Uh, so, you know, through whatever treatment, through uh, adopting, through well, whatever method, I think uh, not all of us will, uh, but I think have children, have children. I put it out there as, you know, it's things to do before you die. That's a good one. Have that really uncomfortable conversation. There, we all have it. Have you? Well, you're gonna have loads of them. I think if you're living right, but don't be afraid and don't go away from that conversation that you don't want to have. Go and have that really awkward, uncomfortable, probably painful conversation. Uh, I think that's probably one of the best self-development things you could do. Uh, yeah. Where I, you know, I'm uh, a dog lover, so get a dog. But something to care for and look after. Like plants are good. You know, I love plants. I would, you know, uh, recommend get plants and everything if you can. You know, care for something because you're scared of killing it. But I think when you're responsible for something's well-being, uh, you know, children obviously. But I think there's a lot of reward to that. And like a dog gives you so much back. Uh, as well so yeah get, get a pet so if you're thinking about it do it if you add one I'm not going to do it uh, go get one yes I will say journal in some capacity or another mm, that doesn't like mean it. like a daily diary it doesn't have to be that it could just be notes it could just be you know spiel poems but document it could be video document your life pictures Document your life one way or the other so that when you're grey and old and you're about to leave this world, you can at least look back on your highlights uh, and kind of get to watch the credits, uh, reflect on it all before you go off and see what's on the other side. Yeah, I love that. Love that. Uh, we've got two more each as. Uh, so no I'll do my, my first one, number 47. Uh, make a fire. Uh, by again whatever means I said about cooking on a fire uh, so I'm saying make a fire obviously you're going to do this outdoors unless you've got some biking you know barn or something like that uh, make a fire and enjoy everything about it enjoy being outside cook on it if you want do s'mores marshmallows whatever be alone talk with others drink but make a fire and just be around a fire I think there's something for me anyway that is just resonates with that so so deep in inside so so deep inside and uh, because i don't want to use my last one for this uh, but along with that uh, read quotes and inspirational stuff i uh, i i think that is an important thing that we don't have enough of in our culture it's uh it, well, we're british uh, it, in particular the kids don't have enough of it at school there there's too much doom and gloom so you know educate yourself with with you know inspirational stuff nice uh i got two more 
yeah, you got this and then I'll do one and you do one. Give. Give. Be charitable. Give your time. Give your energy. Give your love. Give without expecting anything in return. Just be generous and be kind and be helpful and try to leave this world one iota better than when you arrived in it. And if you can't try and have an impact on at least one person who might then go out and make the world a better place, but give of yourself. Yes, I like the way you said it as well. That Yeah, good. My last one, because uh, it ties in with a podcast I was listening to as well, uh, gaze up at the stars. Uh, the less light pollution, the better. So if you can be far away from anywhere, but even if it isn't a, you know, it, uh, obviously you need to have a clear sky to do it. You're not going to be able to do it in a thunderstorm, uh, but gaze up at the stars. Uh, if you can go that step further and get a telescope or you can do it with binoculars, you can even get apps, can't you, that you can look at the stars on, uh, just go to NASA or whatever. Gaze up at the stars. Uh, again, if you've not done it for a long time, do it because I think it's, it's the one thing that, well, they were saying on this podcast that I was listening to, it's the one thing throughout the ages that has never changed in any of our uh, human existence. Uh, so what we've eaten to how, you know, we've lived, uh, everything like that has changed from dot to dot or around the world. But one thing that has always remained the same is we've all gazed up at the same stars. And mm. uh, I think there's something both humbling about it in the sense of the, the grandness and also unique about it on at this current stage, we know ourselves to be the only uh, conscious life. I wouldn't say intelligent life, but conscious life. So yeah, my, my 49 of the 50 things to do before you die, look up at the stars. Real nice. And this last one then, uh, and I'm very much talking to myself as well as anyone who resonates with it, is do that thing that terrifies you. Do that thing that you can think of a hundred reasons why you shouldn't, why you can't, why you wouldn't, and then do it anyway and work out all that stuff that's scaring you about it afterwards. But just go do it. Go do the thing that you are so scared to do because that's the thing that you actually need to do. That's what's calling you and pulling you. And there's a reason that you keep wanting to do it, even though you're scared of it. So just go do the thing. I know you You mean probably like doing, uh, you know, uh, asking the girl out or, you know, going, uh, doing the job interview or whatever. Um, the thing my dad did, uh, you know, uh, around the time in more recent time as in before he he, he passed uh so he, he was a man in his 60s uh we we went to the woods uh, uh leachville woods near where we live where we'd always walk all the time uh, with the dogs but we went there at like 12 o'clock at night and he said i've always had the fear of the woods at night uh always scared of like the monster or the boogeyman or something like that a man in his 60s and he said, I've got to go and walk it. And it was, uh, it's a woods that's, it's like a pine wood. So it's got the fire breaks uh, that you walk down. And he went up for like two hours, just walking in the complete, and it was complete pitch darkness. You know, it's in the middle of nowhere uh, to do that. That was the thing he, he conquered. Uh, he did because he was scared. You know what Good I'm going to do? Based on what you just said, I'm going to get naked and run around the street because I'm scared to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not really. Not Did really. not expect that one at all. <laughs> not really, not really, not really. I don't think we need to finish on a quote or anything today, as I think we did think it. We smashed it. <laughs> How long did that take? I've not got the record number. Have you got a number? We're a uh, uh, forty-five ish minutes. We we did about a minute per per number. We we were yeah. good. We were good to time. I don't yeah. think we dragged it too much. Uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening if you've been listening, whether it be from episode one to episode 25 or uh, this is like you said, JC said, this is your first uh, episode. We've been enjoying making them and doing it. So 50, it's a year then as well, isn't it? Because we had that it is also meltdown a year. week and uh, the Chris, so it's our 50th year anniversary. 
Keep the convo going. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.